Club Talk Hurling is back. Couple of big uh, county finals this uh, weekend, Michael Verney. Now, first of all, we're brought to you by Slattery Sullivan Insurances in Nina. If you want 10% off all new business quotes, call 067 56705 and give the our, uh, the promo code as our game for 10% off. Michael Verney, we'll start off with the Waterford final. You were at the semi final last weekend. You saw Mount Zion beaten by Passage. Now, in the other semi final, Bally Gunner saw off List Moore, which was no real shock. So now it's a battle of Passage and Bally Gunner. Now they share a football team, Galtier, but uh, I wouldn't. I don't. I don't know if too many of them play with it. I think most people are just expecting that this is going to be a fairly comfortable win for Bally Gunner, aren't they? Ah, they are. To be fair, like I was at the game the other day, and it was a brilliant game. It was the best game I was at since things kind of started back up again. Actually, despite having no spectators, had great excitement, but. When you look at the cold hard facts and you're just thinking, I just don't think the quality was as high as if you're if they were playing against Bally Gunner. I just don't think Passage would have been able to take those scores uh, from long distance like like they did. I don't think Liam Flynn, who was at the edge of the square and, and who was brilliant, particularly under a high ball, he was very very good. I just see Philip Matney sitting back in front of him, and um, he's been one of their best players. Uh, Liam Flynn has, but I just don't see how he's going to get the same latitude off the likes of Barry Coughlin. Barry Coughlin will probably spoil him, I'd say. Um, because he's, he's brilliant at doing that in fairness he's brilliant at shutting down a top forward I just don't see them getting that's been able to get that sort of score again 26 points is probably our character in a way for Passage usually would associate them with you know something around 115 116 if Passage are to win that's the type of game it's going to have to be maybe a, even a, you know a, a 312 to 114 or something like that 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 type of a game no more than the, the 2013 final when they beat them and it was a bit of a smash and grab I think they were 7 down going into the last quarter and then finished up 316 to 313 Bally Gunner only scored I think 3 points in the last quarter whereas Passage hit oh, I think they hit 2-4 two, 2-5 two, something like that kind of reminiscent of, of Offaly in the 94 final against Limerick um, it's definitely it's definitely a big task facing them uh, and it's like they've kind of signalled their intent last Sunday. Bally Gunner will be well on on guard, and I just think they have so much quality all over the field. When when you look when you look down through Bally Gunner, do so many lads that can hurt you in so many different places. Yeah, without doubt. I mean, back in twenty thirteen when Passage did that smash and grab, this was against the Bally Gunner team that probably isn't wasn't as quite as sure as sure in itself as it is now. They would lost, I think, to Mount Zion in the quarter final the year beforehand, so maybe they were there to be taken in a way. But if you look since Passage beat them that year, their performance in finals, in general, they've been quite comprehensive winners. So they beat Mount Zion by 13 in 2014. They beat Tallow by 4 the next year. Passage by 17 the next time. De La Salle by 8, Abbeyside by 12, and De La Salle by 9 again last year. Strangely, of all the teams there, to pick out Tallow as the team to run them close to 16 points to 12, is that something that would give Passage encouragement in the sense that maybe we can find a day to shut them down? Or do you actually look at the fact that Passage lost by 17 the last time they got here? Yeah, listen, like you're, you're comparing the 13 final and the 16 final and they're, they're really chalk and cheese, really. I don't think uh, Passage are, are under no illusions of, of what's facing them, I think. Um, even just chatting to Noel Connors after the, after the game the other day and he was just saying... Like they're always underdogs in passage. Like there's less than a thousand people. It's a small, a small fishing village on the outskirts of the city. They're always going to be underdogs, kind of going into games. But he just said, coming from passage, you're always underdogs, regardless of who you're playing. He said the comment at the start of the year was, you know, that they'd be lucky to get out of the group stages. But we didn't even think about that. We got our heads together and drove on as one. We really enjoying our hurling. There's no pressure on us. Um, that's passage hurling. He kind of implying basically that they're always kind of underdogs, regardless of who they're playing. But they're definitely going to be underdogs massive underdogs at the weekend and uh, he said uh, Noel kind of continued I don't think anyone in Waterford or beyond would be under any illusions that Bally Gunner will be vast favourites we're going to be massive underdogs again but we're in a county final where else would you want to be you go out and you just enjoy it when you're going out against a team that's been very successful over the last 10 plus years what else can you do you just go out and try and get you just go out and try and fight for every ball and that's what they're going to they're going to have to kind of turn it into that type of a, a war but even just looking at like some of the passage players and some of them were brilliant the other day. Like physically, I'm just not sure how they're going to match up against, you know, basically a, an inter-county team of sorts with regards to their levels of conditioning that they actually have that are going to be able to rel- relentlessly run and run and run and tackle and break the tackle. Like they're not going to be taking handy options and hitting balls over the shoulders or like that. They're going to be trying to break the tackle every time. Um, 
Michael Walsh, the, the Kilkenny legend who's over who's over passage, kind of said it was mission impossible. Kind of tongue in cheek, half tongue in cheek, half not tongue in cheek. I think they know he said he said like the basically top passage were going nowhere to some extent earlier on the year. They got a few players back, the likes of Killian Fitzgerald is back, Tommy Connors is back, he came on the last day, he was on the water panel a couple of years ago. It it is kind of a David versus Goliath and the fact that that uh, Goliath knows that he has been slayed like like they were in 2013, Ballygunner will really, really be on guard, I think. And to be honest with you, with the best win in the world and always rooting for the underdog, I, I do, I find it hard not to, to see Ballygunner win him probably by eight minimum, being honest with you. That's just been honest. Yeah, and Noel Connors is the name that everyone across the country will know about. He's going to have his fill of it against Desi Hutchinson. And I mean, that's the matchup I'm imagining is going to happen because... If Desi Hutchinson starts to get his dander up, you're in trouble. He had 2-7 scored early against Lismore, 2-8 for a finish. But if he gets enough ball going in, like, to be fair, Noel Connors is going to be an awful bother if a lot of ball goes in because we just see how pacey. And, and even though he was away playing soccer for a few years, Desi Hutchinson still has skill to burn. So the big question is, who's going to stop Philip Mahoney supplying the ball further up the field? Who's going to stop Park Mahoney spraying the ball in? Mikey Mahoney. There are more than just Mahoney's there as well, but there are so many different guys that can sort of load the bullets for Desi Hutchinson that you almost wonder what chance will Noel Connors and co have. And I, I presume they'll have an extra man back there anyway to try and cut out the supply. Yeah, they were they were quite well drilled the other day. Uh, it was a defensive error that led to the Mount Zion goal. Noel Connors was actually on Stephen Roach and he kind of slipped in the back. Apart from two frees where they went for goals at the end, I don't remember them having a goal chance. Now saying that, I don't remember Passage having a goal chance either because I think they, they I don't think they did to be honest with you. And they, they shot shot the lights out with twenty six points. It's the sort of game where everything has to go right for Passage, and if they take twenty two shots, eighteen of them are going to have to go over or under. That's just that's just the way it is. They're going to be have to be unbelievably e- economic. Um, you know. You know, Daisy Hutchison going through it, a ball will have to hit a post rather than go in. That that to me, those are the type of things that are gonna happen, have to happen for, for passage to win. But I think it's um it's definitely worth talking about as well. Like we talked about on this show about, about Morris and the statement Morris has made for Liz Moore, obviously getting Liz Moore to a county semi final, shooting the lights out. You know, fair play to Noel Connors too, because it would have been very easy to to be, I'm sure he is still disappointed about not being on the water panel and the the way to, the way his exit uh happened. But like he's 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 obviously focused all his attention on his club and they're back in a county final that few would have predicted them to be back in. And who knows? Um if he delivers a big performance on Sunday and maybe totally shuts down shuts down Daisy Hutchins and maybe there'll be a possibility of a recall for him as well. So you, so you just don't know. Yeah, this is an audition for plenty of players in Watford if they're trying to catch uh, Liam Cahill's eye. So I think we're both safely going to go for Ballygunner here. I mean, they, they have won those finals in recent years by an average of 10.5 points per outing. So it's hard to go against them. Yeah, I think it'll be 38 not out after Sunday. Very hard, very hard to see that not happen, I'm being honest with you. But there's always that little doubt, not the doubt in the back of your mind. You're hoping Passage were the ones that obviously broke the run before this and obviously beat them in 2013. You may be hoping that they, that they might do it again. But I'd imagine it would be wishful thinking. And listen, I hope the Passage boys, like one of the Passage boys in the panel come up to me the other day after the match and say that they listen to the show and whatever. And hopefully hopefully they'll uh, they'll tweet something out on Sunday evening shoving it back up at us with a bit of luck if they're after winning. Yeah. Um, the Carlo final is on this weekend as well. And I... I think most people would have expected St Mullins to be in this having gotten to the Leinster final last year. Not only that, they give a very creditable performance against Ballyhale Shamrocks. But they're out. Uh, It means Mount Leinster Rangers are against Ballinkillen. And just looking through the record books, Ballinkillen, they've been in just two finals since 1980. One of them was winning in 2001 and they lost in 2004. But like it was a really standout scoreline in two thousand and one when they were against Mount Leinster Rangers, and this would have been, you know, before Mount Leinster started to rack up the titles as they as they've done in recent years and won the Leinster title. But two thousand and one, they beat Mount Leinster two ten to four points, and at half time it was one two to four points. So Mount Leinster didn't even score in the second half. And another strange stat from it was the Ballinkillen's right half back Andrew Gall. He ended up winning man of the match with one five 
which is more, <laughs> which is actually, you know, is double the, the total tally that the Rangers got. So that was a strange one. But That's Bally- like the dream scenario, isn't it? It's like, you know, free taker, captain, line ball taker, wing back, 1-5 one five, one five from Clare, 1-5 from whatever it was. Unbelievable stuff. He, yeah, he can dine out on that one forevermore. No one can ever say a word to him in the club and he'd be like, did you ever score 1-5 from wing back in a county final? I doubt no, it. it's gas. We, we, we won a minor title in Burr in all four against all odds, and uh, we had a fella playing full forward, corner forward, David Guinan. He was absolutely outstanding that day. He was, ah, he was brilliant. It's probably the best best game he'd probably ever heard, regardless of what he does, just because he was so good that day. And I always say that the man should still be dining out. And when he goes into a nightclub, there should still be women flocking over to him. <laughs> uh, but what about Ballon Killen? 120 to 119 over Mount Leinster Rangers. That is a fair statement. And we talked about him a bit last week. But, you know, even the fact that their team is kind of made up of the likes of Sean Murphy, who's known as a county footballer. But interestingly enough, he was actually a county hurler before that. Yeah, no, it's mad, it's mad Jay. They're not, probably not the big names that you're going to associate uh, with Carlo Hurling. The likes of Mouse Kavanagh, James Doyle, obviously Chris Nolan is on the is on the Mount Leinster uh, side. But the likes of David English, Rory Dunbar, Sean Murphy, as I say, Darren Roberts, they have vast uh, experience uh, inter-county football in Hurling and at club level as well. The Whelan brothers, Sean and Kieran as well, kind of driving a forward too. And like it wasn't, you know... It wasn't a, a real dour affair against St. Mullins or anything like that. Far from it. 120 is a massive, massive score. Interestingly, we're saying about Mount Leinster, when, when Ballon Killen beat them in 0-1, Mount Leinster Rangers hadn't got a Carlos Senior Hurling title at that stage. They've won their eight Carlos Senior Hurling titles in the, since 2006. So that's kind of been, they've kind of um, come of age since then, obviously with the 2013 kind of Leinster win as well. Mount Leinster will be, you know, they'll be favourites coming into this. But I definitely think they'll be on guard against Ballon Killen. Especially, you know, when you beat when you beat a side like St Mullins in the semi-final, and they should have probably beaten them last year as well. It was a bit of an early smash and grab at the end by Mullins in the semi-final last year before end up going on to the Leinster final. I think Mount Leinster will be really on guard uh, against uh, Ballon Killen. I definitely think they'll be on guard because they're, they have loads and loads of talent there. If the likes of Sean Murphy can cause loads of trouble at full forward and even coming out causing trouble even further out the field, they'd definitely, definitely be on guard. Now, you, you would be fancying Mount Leinster just because of their experience with the likes of Darren Byrne and Richard Cody, Paul Cody, Kev McDonald, say Chris, Chris Nolan. If Chris Nolan is uh, somewhat kind of um, kept under wraps in the forward line, probably Chris Nolan and Ted, Ted Joyce, Ballon Killen and really fancy their chances, but it's... Mount Leinster are favourites, but you definitely it would be the sort of game where I wouldn't be that surprised if Ballon Killen won either. Yeah, and like you're naming some of those quality forwards, and Dennis Murphy is another one to be mentioned too. On the other side, maybe the the Whelan brothers, Sean and Kieran, might step up for Ballon Killen. But not only did they beat Mount Leinster once, they actually bet them in the group stages as well and beat him comfortably. So it's it's a tough one to weigh up in that way. Like Mount Leinster had it all their way against Nave Owen in the other semi final. 116 to 25, so there were no real bother there. But I think for Ballon Killen, they'll feel like they've been really steeled by their semi final and they'll be looking to make that breakthrough. So, really, really tough one to call here without having seen too much of the teams this year. Maybe there's sort of this, this sort of legacy thing of having seen what Mount Leinster can do and get all the way to an All Ireland final, albeit several years ago at this point. But I mean, maybe it's that just that the know how of winning big finals in recent times would make me just edge towards uh, Mount Leinster. Yeah, I think you said Ballon Killen beat Mount Leinster early in the group. They beat Mullins early in the group as Sorry, well. Sorry, I meant Mullins twice. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, li- listen, no, no more than yourself. Um, I've, I've seen Mount Leinster on the telly a couple of times. I've seen them in the flesh a couple of times. I've never, I've never seen Ballon Killen in the flesh. Uh, I believe it's a very big weekend for them. I think the juniors are in the final uh, this weekend too. And I just we saw a couple of Joe Nolan there down from Ballon Killen. I used to teach in, in Banner. He had... Uh, Loads of bunting up for sale around around Ballon Killen and that, and it's amazing. It's a it must be a, a, a kind of a surreal build up to a county final in many ways. Like you can't have your influence in the ground now anymore by making noise or anything like that. So I'm sure houses are absolutely covered in colours coming up to county finals in Waterford and in, and in Carlow this weekend. Um, I'm actually I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Ballon Killen. Just uh, I I obviously I, I don't have an intimate knowledge of Carlow and I I know bits and pieces of, about what's going on at the moment. But just the fact that they beat Mullins and Mullins had kind of a couple of frees at the end and they're they're well steeled from that. They beat Mullins earlier on the year. They were close last year as well um, it's the, it's the sort of uh, if the likes of Sean Murphy and a few of these lads can cause trouble if you know if Sean Murphy can get two or three points 
and you know win a couple of frees that type of thing I think it could be there there but it'll be an interesting definitely an interesting game without doubt we'll move on to Cork now because there's plenty of group game, or well there's a, a host of group game final round group games going on this weekend and the semi-final spot goes to the group winner with the best record so that kind of keeps it somewhat exciting so score difference is going to come into play the whole lot We'll just start off with the first group. You have Middleton against Douglas and Sarsfields against Ballyhay. So it's it's basically Middleton and Douglas is a playoff for second place and a quarter final spot. Middleton have a better scoring difference, so they they go through if there's a draw. So Middleton, Conor Lahan basically, and the Cadigan brothers and Shane Kingston on the other side. Um, I don't like Douglas. Just it always just screams out to me. How is this team not broken through at this point? Yeah, no, I I'd be the same. I think we had we've had this conversation for the last couple of years. When you look at when you put the, the two Cadigan brothers and you put like there's Alan like who should be absolutely causing wreck in the forward line. You have Shane Kingston with him as well. They should be absolutely going to town. And you have Owen Cadigan at the far end and you've you know, a couple of other lads with, with intercounty experience um kind of sprinkled in there. Uh yeah, you just you you'd wonder how they're not doing better than they are and, and now like they could be out they could be out of championship this again if they don't win. I think Middleton are our Middleton coached are managed by Ben O'Connor, I think, this year. Yeah. Um and obviously Connor Lehan mm-hmm. would be the, the leading man there. Middleton would have a lot more experience of county finals and even winning county titles in recent years over Douglas. Um and kind of funny when you're an underachieving kind of team like that, I, I would kind of think with Douglas like they can't be leaving themselves in situations like this in ga- in games like this you know if they if they'd won all their games they'd be true already and this wouldn't be half as big of a game but they haven't and uh they're under pressure now and i'd you know again i'd probably just be favoring middleton just on experience and because you know probably what you're going to get out of them a bit more than douglas yeah sarsfields they've already beaten middleton and douglas so they're they're true to the quarterfinals uh, Black Rock against Bishopstown and then Aaron's own against Newtown Chandram. So Black Rock have top spot secured already, and it's a straight shootout between Aaron's own and Newtown Chandram. And um, yeah, so that's that's that particular group. Then the final group. This is the only top tier group where first place isn't already decided. You've Glen Rovers against Napierjig and Saint Finbars against Carrick Tuhill. So Glen Rovers are currently top of the table with four, and Napierjig would have uh, three points at this stage. So Glen Rovers in good in you'd imagine in good shape to kind of get through and of course everyone is probably aware that Emma Killy got knocked out this week by UCC or last weekend so that has kind of blown things wide open oh definitely without a doubt yeah like we said they were missing they were missing Declan Dalton and the likes because um because Father O'Neill's are now seniors, that was, that was a big loss. They were missing, I think I went through the stats the other day, between Seamus Harney had been out injured and Declan Dalton um, been missing as well. I think they missed like 3-8 of their county final middle team to score they got last year, I think 2-12 the year before or something like that. But that's a big shock and it'll, um, I saw Mark Lander saying it as well It's uh, during the week, how it's blown up and it's a, a great opportunity for the likes of the Glen or even if Douglas were, were able to step up or Sarsfields who were champions not so long ago. So it's a, a massive opportunity opportunity for them um, obviously as we said I was I was corrected uh, after the show the other day Neil Montgomery I said he was playing with uh, UCC he's actually Abbeyside who were also out there out of the Waterford Championship obviously so UCC could make hay with the likes of, with the likes of him and Shane Conway and a few more that are gone out of their county championships it's a nice little back door to have for those lads like like what what would what's your worst nightmare at this time of the year like everyone's playing club all around the country and you're out but you have a little kind of a trap door that you can go back to. You can go back to UCC. Um, and it's particularly interesting if, you know, some of those lads with UCC, if they're actually finished, if they won't be going back to UCC in September because they're finished their course, shall we say, but they're still in the, the, the college year. So they could win a county title despite the fact that they mightn't actually be in college when the county final is played. So I think that's an interesting kind of a demographic to it as well. Another thing, um, Fintan O'Connor is over the Kerry team. And for, from his point of view, getting Shane Conway back after he's played both a Kerry Championship and a Cork Championship. So the Kerry Championship, he's always going to be a star player there. Then he goes into the Cork Championship, which if you base it on his history and how many monster titles Cork teams would have won versus Kerry teams in Hurling, he's playing at a higher level again. So the way that's going to prepare him for when Kerry get going in the Hurling Championship like that's probably even better again for as far as Vincent O'Connor is concerned, assuming there's no injury. 
Ashton, it's absolutely ideal. Yeah, like um, I think I remember chatting Finton about it before. That he loves he loves seeing him pit his skills against not no disrespect to the Kerry Championship or the level that Kerry are playing at, but he loves seeing um, Shane Conway and a couple more lads that might be involved with UCC pitting their skills against higher up op- higher class opposition because it just shows how good he is. And obviously, then when you go back to that lower opposition, you have that under your belt and. Um, it can even cause even more wreck at that level. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see, uh, as I said on, on Monday's show, Imo Kelly, it's great. a divisional side is great until they're winning, and a college side is great until they're winning. But there's uproar then when they do win, or people are looking into rule books and stuff like that. So um, yeah, it could be an interesting couple of weeks ahead for, for UCC. Imo Kelly are gone, but UCC could kind of fill that kind of controversial void almost in Cork. Yeah, because Glen Overs were one of the teams that wanted Imo Kelly out, and maybe they'll want uh, UCC out as well. But of course, that puts pressure on them to deliver. And they were on TV against St. Finbar's a couple of weeks ago. And they fairly battered the bars for a finish. Uh, Simon Kennefick really stood out that day. Patrick Horgan, we remember he scored the was a top corner job from the 21 yard at least after flicking a ball through someone's legs. So the pressure will be on them to beat Napierschik, and I'd say most people would fancy him to do so. For St. Finn Bars uh, against Carrick Tool, the way that game is poised, the bars are they're they're probably in relegation trouble. They'll be heading for a playoff unless they can get a big victory here because they're on minus 26 score difference, which is fairly poor. Whereas if the Glen were to win against Napierzyk, Carrick Tuhill, who are currently on one point, they could qualify if they beat uh, Finbars and actually had a good turnaround in terms of the score difference. So it's all to play for for Carrick Tuhill, for sure. Yeah, you, lo- you love a game like that that's coming down. I, lo- I love permutations when you come Ooh. down in a group permutations. If everybody has a- everybody basically has a shot at it going into the last game, then that's exactly what you want. And Carrick Tuhill obviously won a county title like, not, in the two- not too long ago, in the, la- in the last decade. Led by uh, led by Niall McCarthy, so they're they're um, they're not exactly strangers to a big kind of a win like that or a big turnaround. So they that that's the really that's the group that everyone will have their eyes on in Cork this weekend. So the Offaly Championship is back. You must be buzzing with it, eh? Well, I'm I'm no use to anybody at the moment because I'm still out. But so I'm not maybe as buzzing as I should be. It's mm. it's more yeah it's more head so you're sickened any, you're yeah. actually sickened because uh, i think ever most lads know it if you if you've ever had injuries or like yourself picking them up f- fairly persistently it's it can it can be an awful killer and leave you quite dejected ah yeah like it's there's nothing worse than like training the whole way during lockdown and things like that and you're just waiting to get back and played a nice few games when we got back and then picked up a knock on the tuesday night before the championship game a hamstring knock that's still not even close to being right unfortunately so yeah it is tough it's it's tough particularly in this kind of case i thought when when the lockdown came as well that the two weeks would buy me a lot of time but just hasn't bought me enough time at all but listen hopefully hopefully the boys will do the job at the weekend uh lots of interesting games there's obviously only been one round played but there could be a couple of teams including ourselves that could be out after this weekend if if we don't get a positive result just to go through the the first group, so you have and Coolary, they're playing in Burr on uh, on Saturday. So both were Leinster champions, obviously, in the last decade. Both narrowly won their opening round games. Kilcarmac beat us by three, and Coolary beat uh, Sir Kieran by one. Basically, the winner goes through to the to the semi final and is likely to top the group. Both kind of teams are still relying on a fair bit of experience. Kilcarmac started uh, a few kind of younger younger lads against us. Kind of ended up going back to the wily old servants. The likes of here on seven, Jarhili and Conor Matten was brilliant from centre forward. Kuleri, obviously, um, the, the they're always they're always filled with experience and they're always very very hard beaten. This is going to be an interesting game. I I probably just be just be favouring Kilcarnock just, uh, just be, probably have a bit more a bit more youth. The likes of Keelan Kiley, Kyle Kiley, even Tom Spain who transferred in from Brazil Gales this year has been a big addition to them. Probably just fancy. Uh, I probably just fancy Kilcarnock in that one, and in the other one, obviously we play we play Sir Kieran on Sunday in O'Connor Park. Basically, the loser is out, so it's kind of the winner takes it all for uh, in that game. But even if the winner will not be true to the knockout stages, but they'll ha- leave themselves in with a fighting chance going into the final game. We were beaten in the county final last year, obviously by a pint, and Sir Kieran were in a senior B champions last year and beaten in the Leinster Intermediate Final. They never really should have been down in senior B, though, should they? I mean, with the quality no. of players they have. 
No, probably not. And uh, funnily enough, like, Joe Bergen missed the, the Coolary game and they were only beaten by a point. And there's talks that he, that he could be out for this weekend or out for the rest of the season as well with a groin injury. But it's one of those things where you know, you'll only know you'll only know at two o'clock on Sunday whether he's actually there or not. And you won't. You'll be hearing like, a friend of mine, a cousin of mine, actually, Shane Murphy there from Clary, not to me this morning, telling me that they only had 10 at train and then ah, none of the lads are interested. The usual plot, plot, more stuff that, that, you always, that you always hear. But you'll find out kind of on Sunday fairly quickly, and they'll be going absolutely hell for leather for that. Uh, they were a bit incensed over some of the refereeing decisions at the end of the the Coolary game. They definitely feel that they deserved at least at least a draw. So yeah, that's going to be an interesting game, and winner takes it all. And with the conditions kind of outside at the moment, it'll turn it probably turn into a real dogfight as well. Does this count as mind games? You answering your cousin here on our game, <laughs> just letting him know you're not going to be put off by this. There was a great one. I'm not too sure if I said it to you before. Uh, Sir Kieran were playing um, Saint Rhinus in an under 21A semi final. Jesus, it could be it could be ten years ago now. It would have been Joe Bergen's maybe second last year or last year under 21. And Tony Murphy, who everyone knows, great character around Offaly Ireland, secretary for years. Uh, he was fi- he filled the Rhinus lads at Offaly training the week of that match with. That much, that much shite. There's no point in saying any different, you know. The, ah, the lads aren't interested. How we've no one training. Jizzy, you'll walk that final. You'll be whoever. And Sir Kieran came out and beat them by ten points. Left them with, left them with their tails between their legs. That's kind of, uh, that's a traditional tactic out there, out, out in the countryside. But uh, yeah, that should be an interesting game. There's, there's lots of interesting games in Offaly uh, this weekend and in general since the. Since the format was changed to two groups of four, or it was, it was last year, a group of eight, you don't have, there's no handy games anymore, and anybody can be anyone in a given weekend. So in the other group, Belmont are playing Chiron on that's on Saturday evening in Borough as well. So Belmont were beaten in the last three semi finals by the eventual champions by a score or less, uh, a point on two occasions, and two points, I think it was last year, by Rhinus. They'll be definitely disappointed they were beaten by Rhinus in the first round game. Uh, I think there was I think there was three or four points in it. They'd have the likes of Oshin Kelly um, and uh, David Nally be kind of leading the line there. They'll be out this weekend if they, if they don't win or get a draw. So a lot of pressure on them there to play football on Monday night as well. A lot of those, these lads, I think they had a comfortable enough victory against Bracknell, but there's a good bit of um, a good bit of pressure on this g- the game this weekend. And Shinro will be a similar kind of side to Belmont. A lot of energy, um, a lot of scoring power as well. They snatched a, a snatched a draw from Balnamir when they mightn't have deserved it. Balnamir were probably just the better side when they played. It's, it's over a month ago now at this stage. Um, so that's going to be a really, really interesting game. If Chiron can get a result, they'd be, not to be, they'd be as good as true, but they're leaving themselves in a, in a good position. Whereas if Belmont, if Belmont lose, they're out. And then in the other game, Balnamir and, and Rhinus are playing on Sunday, yeah, on Sunday in O'Connor Park. Rhinus were obviously champions last year. Ken Hogan, who seems to bring success wherever he goes, be it Kuleri, Rhinus, or, or Boris Kilcotton, or even when he was involved with the, with the Tip 21s, they'd have the likes of Ben Keneally, Aidan Tracy, Sean Dole, and Dermot Short, Ronan Hughes, kind of lads that would have played with Offaly at different stages. And uh, Dara Tierney is kind of a key man now. He was man of the match the last day against Belmont, having actually not played senior the last, the last couple of years. Um, Balamir pushed Rhinus actually very close last year when they played him in a group game, and it was probably a dead rubber. But the likes of Ross Ravenhill, Brian Dyke, and obviously Michael Son, they'll be they'll be hoping to kind of put it up to Rhinus this weekend. But kind of hard hard to see Rhinus been been beaten though. I just think they'll have a bit too much experience. Valdemir will still be in it even if they don't win. Well, depending on the result in the other game, they'll probably still be in it. Um, and going into the last game, but yeah, really really tight kind of championship. You can kind of throw a rug over over the eight teams in it really. Yeah. Um, the the Antrim quarterfinals are on this weekend, and I've a, a preview of that done with Cahir O'Kane, so check that out on our game.ie. Uh, the Derry semi finals are on this weekend Kevin Lynchster against Ballina Screen and Schlock Neeler against Swatra. And I think most people would expect that to be uh, comfortable enough wins for Kevin Lynch and Schlock Neal, but we'll wait and see how that goes. Now, the Galway Championship. So, this is actually a weekend where you're both going to both have football and hurling on in Galway. And in the goal, like I tried to find out what the situation is with these Galway games. It's a bit of a convoluted system. I was on to David Connor, uh, David Connors of the Tomb Hurl. He gave me a bit of a background on it here, so I'll I'll sort of try to make it as easy as possible. So it's. I can I can kind of tell before before you go through this. Have you ever seen the film Basketball? Uh, no. 
basketball is basically it's the it's the voices of the lads in South Park and it's a, a mixture of a game between baseball and basketball but there's all these like regional divisional finals and if you finish sixth here you get a trap door entry into the championship this kind of sounds like what the Galway championship is it just seems very convoluted and hard to understand and until it actually happens you don't actually know what's going to happen yeah well part of it is this is where this is the point after the group stages where they merge together the senior A and the senior B. So it's leaving us with fixture this weekend of uh, fixtures this weekend of Climber Daly against Mullia, Sarsfields against Ardrahan, Baha against Kilnadima Leitrim, Lee Mellows against Gort, and Crawhill against Ahaskra Fahina. So just as what David Connors told me. So um, both you know with both senior A and senior B having the capability to win the championship, it's a sort of an odd structure. So the four senior A teams are already into the quarter final. The teams who topped their groups in Turlockmore, St. Thomas's and Capitagal, plus Loch Ray, then they were they came through as a second place team. Now they were joint top of Capitagal in their group. The remaining two senior A second place teams have to play a preliminary quarter final. So that's Sarsfields and Lee Mello. And uh, that also contains all the top two teams from the three groups in senior B. They were drawn at random last weekend. Each winner will then be drawn against Turlockmore. Thomas's Cappy and Loch Grey in the quarters. So there you go. That's how it kind of works out. Clear as mud, yeah? I have no idea what you just said. Um, I know, I have, I, have, I have a fair idea. Basically, whoever loses this weekend is going to be gone anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's as simple as that now. They've really simplified it there. So, yes. yeah, like Sarsfields, as I said, last weekend, really un- unimpressive against Castlegar. Really low quality game. I'm sure they'll be looking to get an awful lot more out of themselves. Um, Ardran interested to see what they can produce I, I, I don't know I played them in a challenge match a couple of years ago down in Port Leash and they were a decent team um, it be interesting to see if Johnny Glynn is, is back around like because it, it seems to be having said a couple of months ago uh, when he was talking about um, battling kind of COVID there for a couple of days and that mm. he kind of said that his Galway days might be over and it didn't look like he'd be playing with Ardran but I believe he, he transferred back and I, I'm not 100% sure if he, if he has been playing. It's funny when the games are just kind of a, maybe away from the spotlight. You don't, it's harder to get the kind of detail. It's no, harder yeah. to actually know, you know. But if, if, he, if, he is, if he is back, they'd probably they'd have a couple of the Greens playing there as well. Um, I think there might be still one of them playing anyway. Um, and the funny thing about Ard Ratton is I've never seen anything like uh, a place to breed lads that seem to all be over six foot five. I was going to say that, yeah. Absolute land of the Giants. Um, Lee Mellows then obviously regular challengers they're up against Gort and you, you'd imagine that the senior A teams are going to win here both Sarsfields and Lee Mellows uh, Crowell have definitely shown good form over, over recent years in terms of like some good results they're against Ahaskra Fahina who will be going up to senior A next year and they have the Mannions so maybe that, that'll be one of the more interesting games there but uh, I, I do think we expect Sarsfields and Lee Mellows to go through for sure yeah, Lee Mellows had a good win against uh, against Ormore uh, Marie last weekend, and a uh, Hasgra a kind of robbed Mulya at the end. I think uh, Horik Mannion got on a breaking ball, a ball that was going over the bar. I think the keeper took it down and he followed it into the net. Hmm. I think he got another couple of late scores to beat Mulya last weekend. They, that's probably not cut and dry. I'd say that game will be Gart. Well, listen, Gart were county champions only a couple of years ago as well. They don't seem to be going as well now. Probably Aidan Hart, Greg Lally would be the, the ones that would probably stand out. But you probably would expect Mellows and Crockwell to come through and those. And the, the senior the senior A sides probably should be winning the majority of those games, you'd imagine anyway. Yeah. So the Sligo Hurling Championship this weekend, East Gear against Tour Strand and Calorie St. Joseph's there against Western Gales. Now the Tipperary quarterfinals are on and I've done a full preview with Shane Brophy of the Nina Guardian, so check that out on our game that I but I just What was your what was your power ranking eight, one to eight there really quickly as soon as you got time to do it? Um let me just check here. I had a, uh, you should have it on the top of your head. Huh? You should have it at the top of your head. Okay, let me see. I don't remember. But uh, <laughs> you'll you'll have to check it out because Shane Brophy did his and it was more me querying him than the other way okay. around. I didn't pick my top eight. But I'll go through the fixtures and just get, uh, get a couple of your thoughts on them. Uh, Kildangan against Tumi Vara. Now, I think most people would, would have been somewhat impressed with Tumi Vara against Burris Ali, even though they'd come back late on after Burris got a run on them. And the way that they kind of struggled for a time against Burgess and were four points down going into the second half, but they still got through, having beaten Upper Church also. Kildangan, first day, they only barely held on against um, J.K. Brackens to get a point. It was a late free just to even get get that. B. 
beat Ross Gray and then comfortably beat Drum and Inch the last day. I think they won by nine points for a finish, something like four fifteen to eighteen points. So both teams, there's a bit of merit to them. But Killadangan, I think they've probably far more scorers in that forward line with, you know, the likes of Paul Flynn, Willie Connors, even who's going to be in midfield, uh, Dan O'Mara and Joe Gallagher. There's like there's plenty of different scorers in that team. Billy Seymour. Yeah, too much, too much scoring power for me. Way too much scoring power for for Tommy Varr, particularly when you get to. The, the latter stages they, they have lads they, they've three or four lads up in the forward line as you said Paul Flynn um, Billy, Billy Seymour even like Joe and Ty Gallagher are further back the field uh, I think Dar Egan is in the goals as he this year as well like they've got they've got lads oh, they've got lads all over the pitch there that can hurt you and uh, they obviously had that county final experience last year where they probably underperformed and sure they're mad to get back to that position again uh, the Turles Nina game I think is a, they're all interesting actually and that's a great thing about, about getting to this stage I think they are all really, really interesting games Turles obviously had that big loss and um, we're talking about injury there poor, poor old Billy McCarthy like Jesus your, your, your head would be absolutely fried He's not long back from from doing the cruciate, and and it happened again. And I just see actually uh, Chris Kerr, the former the former Antrim goalie, and the this and uh, Saint Gaul's goalie did he did his cruciate again there as well. I just saw it on Facebook yesterday too. So uh, thoughts with those two guys, tough tough time when you're going through an in, when you're going through serious injuries like that. But Billy McCarthy be a big loss for Turles, and like if Nina like here's a. Uh, a glorious opportunity for, for Nina now. You know, no, there's basically no pressure on them whatsoever. The whole county probably thinks that Turles are going to are going to win this game. They're strong favourites going in. Um, Nina have loads and loads of talent. Jake the only Morris, thing is, right? The only thing is coming into this with Billy McCarthy out, ball winner, and then there's concerns over Dennis Maher shoulder injury, another ball winner. It might revert to the the old thing that was said about Turles that they've all these dandy um, forwards. Who can score if you put the ball in their hand? But who's going to win it for them? You know, it might mm. it might feel like that's the situation coming into this game. Possibly, possibly so, possibly so. Yeah, but like just the results so far this year would suggest that yeah, they're going to be missing a couple of ball winners. But they look like they're fairly on point. They look like they're absolutely hopping off the ground. Any stainless or anything that had been in place the last couple of years definitely seems to be gone. Whereas Nina on the other side, like when you go through the forwards and you're thinking that Jake Morris, Paddy Murphy, Andrew Coffey as well, who was with the Tip 21s a couple of years ago, and you're just thinking, just they have loads of talent. Mikey Heffernan, Tommy Heffernan. You go through the talent that they have and you're just wondering why they're not producing. They're probably still a bit hurt over the county final performance against Clanauti a couple of years ago. Um, this is a chance for them to really uh, make a statement. Like it's, it's, like it's, it's kind of this is it for them. Like really, and this is probably it for maybe this Nina team who have been there thereabouts the last couple of years. If they're able to beat Turles, they have unbelievable momentum behind them. They have unbelievable confidence behind them. It's either that or, or they're probably going to limp out of championship one or the other. You'd, you'd still be fancy in Turles, but I'd hope that there's a, that there's a kick in Nina. Yeah, Clonulty Ross Moore against Lockmore Castellani is a very tasty fixture. I'm sure you saw it a lot more on TV against Killer One and the way they... I think as the game went on, a lot more were the stronger team because Killer One had started well. They'd gone maybe four points to one ahead. They looked like the team who should be coasting home here. And their half-back line was on top. You know, Willie Cleary was coming out with ball. Craig Morgan was coming out with ball. But as the game wore on, you kind of knew that Noel and John McGrath, they'd start getting involved in the game. They'd start moving the pieces around. And then, you know, Evan Sweeney ended up getting ball in space and put away 2-3. Yeah, Lockmore were brilliant that day. Um, and what they're doing is, is phenomenal, really. Uh, I just think it's... Um, I did a piece in the paper to, in the paper today in the Independent today, just chatting to Frankie McGrath and even just chatting to Evan Sweeney as well. They have the same manager for hurling and football, which I think is is a fairly novel kind of a tactic, a novel kind of a decision to make uh, from a club and a board. Uh, because it just... There's so many... Apart from David Kendi in the goals, obviously, an All-Ireland winner in 2001, he's in goals for the hurlers, he's not in goals for the footballers. They have largely the same teams and lads playing in predominantly the same positions so it makes an awful lot of sense and Evan Sweeney was just saying that any in-house trouble or any fighting or anything like that or lack of communication is basically just totally taken out of the equation with Frankie McGrath and over both teams they're in the football semi-final already and I think this will be their 
think they've played six weeks in a row at this stage. Um, I don't, I don't see that being an issue. If they were playing uh, Monday, whenever. Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, it would be. But I think, like, even if they were um, training, like I'd say, most of the rest of the clubs, they've been off playing training matches, like A versus B, whatever it might be, doing hard sessions. So. Yeah, I wouldn't see it as being the biggest issue. And the change is as good as the rest. You know, they might enjoy going from hurling to football week on week. Yeah, and I think some sessions start with football and finish with hurling and vice versa. And the fact that they're winning games as well, I think they were fairly put out about uh, over the performance against Hurlis. Just chatting Evan Sweeney after he, he kind of said that they, they let themselves down and there was a, there was a nice kick in them against... Uh, it was a nice kick in the, the last day when a lot of pressure was on probably Killer on as well. The pressure was on both teams really, but they were they were the ones that delivered. Um, Noel McGrath was kind of linking play. John McGrath, they probably didn't have as much of an influence on play as you'd want. Like you kind of think that they need to be having an eight or a nine out of ten every day to go out. But Brian McGrath was out the middle of the field and chipped in a good bit more. Evan Sweeney was brilliant. Uh, James Marr was brilliant uh, wing back. He was, he, was, he was outstanding and he was driving them forward and uh, John Ryan wing back as well so this is a very very I find it really very very hard to call this game I'll be honest with you this is a, an absolute 50-50 game for me uh, Sox and Alty in the 2018 county final they were brilliant haven't probably scaled those heights since and kind of went down they were, they were poor they were poor enough in their last group game obviously they knew they were true already yeah. but I'd probably I'd probably favour lock more I'd probably just maybe that bit of Maybe not not cuteness. I thought they were very very. They were cute and showed their experience the last day. I just probably think that probably um, there might be just a, another kind of going lock more. I don't see them. I don't see them winning the county title, but I think they could take out someone that could potentially win it. And I think this could be the day. It certainly feels like a tight game. And, and having won it in twenty eighteen, Clonoty were on telly last year against Bursley in a group game. Didn't really impress. Lost that game. I think they kind of they brought the game back in terms of like they had fallen a nice bit behind and they brought it back a lot closer. Didn't impress me that day. Then they were against Killer One in the quarter final. I was out with that game in mind. Really didn't impress me, and they could have lost by a lot more than they lost by. But this year they now have Dylan Quirk back, and you're putting him into a forward line that already has Timmy Hammersley and Kyle Burke looks like a good hurler coming through as well. So John O'Keefe centre back he's missed a bit of game time this year I think he'll be coming on as sub but he should be right to start as well I'm actually just going to pip for uh, Clonolte Ross Moore in that one uh, Bursley against Drummond Inch any thoughts on that one uh, I know that you probably don't have too many thoughts as you could have shared with anyone anyway but um, I thought it was interesting um, I was talking to Seamus Callan when was it last year it was probably in early January ish maybe before they played their all Ireland semi-final and like, Drum and Boris Lee are obviously very, very close together. And they can then go to school in Boris Lee. He did indeed. I'd, I'd often see him hanging outside Shanahan's shop lunchtime after lunchtime, yeah. I'm sure he, I'm sure he tried to poach him at some stage or tried to call him in. Or I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I, I remember chatting him and um, obviously there's a massive respect for Boris Lee and everything they've done. But there was a massive surprise as well that they had, that they had done what they did. And that they went all the way to an All Ireland final, and I'm sure the likes of Drum and a few other clubs are thinking, like, if, if Boris can do that, there's obviously no provincial campaign this year. But if Boris can do that and win their county title, there's no reason why we can't. And I don't uh, like. Obviously, Callan is probably the the key man here. Like, where do they play him? Do they play him in full forward? And if they get six or seven balls into him and he can, you know, get one three or one four job done or do they put him out into the half forward line and hope that he gets on 10 or 15 balls and is able to control the game a bit more. An interesting kind of dilemma for them, depending on breeze and different way the conditions are, maybe they'll play him in centre forward or out the field, maybe one half and put him in full forward when, when they have a breeze. But it's an interesting one. I think Boris have, have carried themselves quite well as all Ireland finalists and Munster champions. There was obviously more pressure comes with that tag but there's obviously also a bit of a release from the fact that okay we we've been to the mountain we've kind of scaled the summit we know uh, how to get there and we don't have shackles we're not thinking about the you know the the all ireland winning team we're not trying to continuously emulate them that's not kind of hanging over us anymore so i i kind of we played boris or and i was impressed with them um i thought they were well drilled i thought they were hopping off the ground they didn't weren't showing any signs of um you know weariness or anything like that that they you know that they had a long year last year and that some of it had carried over 
And uh, I, I, I'd be favour of Morris there. I think Morris will prevail by three or four. But the Callan conundrum is interesting. Interesting to see what they do with him. Yeah, and, and also, obviously, Paddy hasn't played in the Championship so far. So if he's right, do you throw him straight back in on Callan? I mean, that is a conundrum. Ray McCormick has been out recently. He missed the last game. Kieran Maher, who scored that goal in the in the Ballygunner Munster final last year, he's uh, he hasn't been playing either. So there's been a couple of injuries for Bursley. So it hasn't been playing sailing, even though they've eventually kind of wound up through the gears and, and finished off quite well against Upper Church. Shane Kenny's come in and he's played well when he's been in the forward line. So the options are there. It's just uh, it always comes back to the use of the ball. Like when whoever is spare man, if it's Dan McCormick at the back, just try and find your forwards, find the ball short to James Devaney. Jerry Kelly try and get them on the ball because if they're in the game there's going to be scores I mean Jerry Kelly isn't going to score seven points in an All-Ireland final against Bally Hale if he's not a brilliant player not to mention some of his other performances so for Burris if they can use the ball well I can see them winning this game but I, I can't help but go back to the quarter final in Holy Cross last year when Burris said he didn't score for the first 10 or 12 minutes and didn't score for the last 10 or 12 minutes but then again are they a more assured team having gone through that journey last year that's kind of the question yeah, it'd be interesting as well. And James Woodlock, I believe, is is over Drummond Inch this year. But yeah, you didn't realize, he's not playing, yeah. yeah. And yeah, John, Johnny Ryan has gone to centre back. Yeah, that's 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 an interesting one as well. Um, he's obviously going to bring kind of the modern approach to it uh, as a, a recently retired inter county player. Johnny Kelly, who wasn't with Boris Lee earlier on the year, is back with Boris Lee. I think Martin Maher had, had taken over uh, in March or that, but Johnny Kelly is back now. Obviously, he's relieved of his awfully duties at the moment. So it's after I think it's after working well. For Boris Lee, I think they're probably after sitting, fitting back into you know the old backroom team that they had, the team that got them so far. And the day we played Boris Lee, they were the, the use of possession. JD wasn't playing that day, but the use of possession was was outstanding. Ball to hand, 40, 50 yards, points, snapping ball. Brendan Maher, uh, Dan McCormack. Um, I just, I yeah, I, I, I think Boris will come through this. I just think the shackles are off a bit with Boris, and they might even be able to ex- possibly even be able to express themselves a bit more this year than last year. That's not to say that they'll win. They might that they'll win a county title, but I think they get over the weekend. But either way, it's four brilliant quarterfinals on between Saturday and Sunday, so definitely worth checking out. The Armagh Championship this weekend: Love Jarrigar against Middletown, Nafina, Donegal, Burter against St. Eunan's, Buncranagh against Tanta. Uh, Sean McCooler against uh, Burt as well apparently in the same weekend uh, the Down Championship St. Patrick's are against Breda and Bally Galgut against Bally Cran now the Kilkenny Championship we're back in action this weekend Bally Hale against uh, Roar in Ishtig. so the back to back All-Ireland Champions against Roar who are without their main man Richie Lahey there's a feeling of one-way traffic here I mean Bally Hale weren't brilliant in the first game against Tullerone got out of jail with a late Owen Reid goal they then lost to James Stevens quite heavily if I have the right opposition. Oh, Lachlan Gales, in fact, lost to them quite heavily before beating a Danesford team that didn't have one of their star men, Paddy Hogan. It's actually kind of hard to know where Bally Hale are at, but even so, you know they're going to walk through this game by 10 or 12 points. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I, this is, it's, it's set up for Bally Hale to have a, a right good run at it again, as I said. A new manager, new centre-back. Um, Richie Reid kind of bedding in at centre back now that Mick Fenley is retired. They had a couple of bad results, a couple of reversals, a draw and a, and a loss. They, I just think it's it's absolutely set up for them to kick on. They'll be in the they'll be in the quarterfinals proper, and then uh, then we'll probably see more like the Bally Hale that that we've come accustomed to. A couple of the other preliminary quarterfinals, Danes for the Mullen of that. Is we don't know if, if Paddy Hogan will be back. Um, he'll be massive to Danes for cause. Even that, I think they're under pressure. Well, Nevat have kind of stuttered a bit this season, but they should have enough in the tank to take care of Dainsford. Uh The bridge against Bally Callan again. The bridge. Uh, the bridge beat Tullerone in their last game. They've got a nice little sprinkling of inter county talent. Sean Morrissey, Jason Clear, Liam Blanchfield, and I'm sure there's a couple more there as well. They they beat Tullerone and uh, they beat Dainsford as well. So they're coming from an opener round loss. To follow that with back to back wins, find it very, very hard to, to see them beaten. I think Billy Ryan could still be out for Greg Bally Callan, or has been out anyway, and they've been struggling. It's very hard to see them pulling a rabbit out of the hat. But the last game is probably the, the game of the weekend in Kilkenny, Tullerone and Aaron Zone. As we've talked about, Tullerone had, depending on what way you'd look at it, you could look at it as a horrible three games, or you could look at it as, as they're perfectly steeled for this 
coming into actually will knock out Hurland. They've had three games where they're under no illusion about what senior Hurland is about. They obviously drew at Bally Hale, uh, were beaten by O'Loughlin's and were beaten by the Bridge. Three of the best teams, three of the mm-hmm. best teams in, in Kilkenny. There's no point in saying any different. So, um, yeah, it's going to, it's going, that'll be an interesting game. They're definitely battle hardened, uh, but they're coming up against a really battle hardened side in general, like Aaron's own. Remember to beat the beat the borough was at one six to or one eight to one six in a quarter final. I yeah, think last it was in the yeah. team and rain last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one It wasn't a great yeah, spectacle. Like, no, it wasn't a great spectacle. But like they, their games, they bring into the trenches every every time. Like Sakira Wallace, uh, Connor Delaney. Uh, Connor Fogarty obviously is one who went off injured last day, but I'd imagine he'd be fit to play this. Like that's an inter county backline, isn't it? I mean, Kieran Wallace is, he hasn't played that many games for Kilkenny, but he's looked all right when I've seen him play for them. And yeah, the other, no, the other two boys are obviously established at this point. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not 100 percent sure of where of where Fogarty's playing, but you'd probably be looking at three, six, and eight. I mm. I would probably think with them just to try and you know club teams generally try and spread out their talent a bit more and kind of balance it out a bit but that's the game of the weekend in Kilkenny very very interesting um, I'd probably just favour uh, Castle Comer Aaron's own just with that bit of kind of know-how and kind of at that level maybe Tullerone only coming up well I think that could be a really interesting game wouldn't be surprised if that ended up in a draw maybe and had to go to extra time and possibly penalties yeah and don't forget to get in your comments if you think we're right or wrong or if you, if there's any point we missed please do let us know the Wicklow Championship Round 3 this weekend Bray Emmett's are against Avondale Greystones against Glenealy and St. Pat's against Kiltegan yeah, Greystones need to beat Glen Ely by five points or they're out. Glen Ely have won their two games so far already, so that's that's probably the game of the weekend. And Pats and Kiltegan, uh, the winner that goes through to the semi final, so it's a big uh, a big incentive there. Kiltegan would have been a powerhouse in in Wicklow Hurling. I remember when Bor were playing them in the nineties. I remember going down to going down to Wicklow and we were lucky. Bor were lucky to come out with a victory. I think end up winning the, the club all Ireland. I think you actually beat Kiltegan twice along the way to win in, to win in Club All Ireland so that'll be an interesting game there Pats have the, the likes of Andy O'Brien there who's always a handful um, yeah that's good that, that's probably the that between that and the Greystones the Lady game two interesting games in Wicklow this weekend and then just in, in a couple of the other games uh, Loud seen the Hurling Championship Brown 2 knock bridge against uh, Nave Moneen and then Leash is back on obviously the same as Offaly this weekend um, the, there's a group group A and group B so Clock Balakala against Abbey Leeds St. Lazarians Castletown against Rackdowny Earl and then in Group B you have Ballin uh, Kill against Boris Nostri Kill Cotton and Camros against Rose and Alice just an interesting one in Leash I always think there's a there's a fair peck and order in Leash uh, it's like the you know people talk about you know how should we say is it in football usually they talk about you know the, the top you know we talk about the Super 8 but there's usually a top 3 or a top 4 within the, within the Super 8 it's the same it's the same in Leash it'd be very it'd be nearly impossible to see a county champion in Leash coming outside of Rat Downey, who were obviously reigning champions, Camros, Boris Kilcotton, and probably just behind them in four to probably Clock Balakala. But those uh, those four would be well clear of the, the rest in in my view from when we've played them anyway in club games down through the years. But uh, it'd be it'd be an interesting one because there's never anything between Rat Downey and particularly Camros, I would say they're probably the two leading lights. They'd probably be favourites to, to be winning it out. Yeah, and after the, the bit of a shutdown there for a while, we'll probably know more after this round of games and be able to talk in more depth. Um, so that's it for Club Talk Hurling, brought to you by Slattery Sullivan Insurances in Nina. If you want to get a new business quote there, use the reference code RGAME and you'll get 10% off all new business quotes. Thanks very much, Michael.